from within our own communities. Recently, Los Angeles hosted a joint counterterrorism workshop where local first responders weighed in on safety in our region. Gil Reyes reports. A debt of gratitude to each of you for your leadership and support of efforts as this. We're not allowed to show you the entire meeting because to do so might empower the enemy. Here, local law enforcement, fire departments, and the FBI exchange confidential information during this two-day counterterrorism exercise and workshop. These local first responders say Los Angeles is ready in case of a terrorist strike. And conferences like this one provide not only a refresher course, but also an improvement course to help fill any gaps. It's important to know and understand that the threat is serious, it's current, and we're constantly engaged in thinking in ways of what we can do to improve the intelligence signal. Whether it's a coordinated strike against multiple targets or from one individual like the case in Colorado. Maintaining close ties between public safety agencies is key to quick response. L.A. City Fire Chief Brian Cummings says he's confident about his department's response times, but sees room for improvement when it comes to resources. We're challenged by the budget that we're given. Uh, the fire department has shrunk over the last two years, so we have fewer men and women that are on the, in the field every day on a daily basis. So we're slowly trying to grow the department back to add additional ambulances, to add additional uh, capabilities out in the field. A new, uh, we're hoping to hire for the first time in three years uh, starting in September 2013. So we're, we're slowly building back. Currently around 950 on-duty fire personnel serve the city on a daily basis. The chief wants to increase that number to around 1,100 to greater ensure safety in our region. In downtown LA, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. This year's joint counterterrorism conference in downtown LA was the largest in the U.S. to date. And when it comes to safety, many neighborhoods are taking an active role in preventing crime in their community by taking part in National Night Out. It's an effort that started 29 years ago in response to the rising crime rate in the country. As Anna Marcos tells us, National Night Out has become a way to both stop crime and bring communities and police closer together. Ruben Hernandez may be missing his eyesight, but that won't stop him from leading a national night out march this week in his Koreatown community. LAPD officers from the Olympic Station will march side by side with him and community members, all with one goal in common, to stop crime in its tracks. Seven years ago, it was the worst community in Los Angeles in crime. So my quest was to go and start knocking at the door of many community leaders of different ethnic backgrounds. Koreans and Latinos was the most difficult thing to come together, but we did. And then the Bangladesh came aboard, and then the Filipinos, and then the Oaxacans, and then the Central Americans. And all of us now, we're working together because diversity is wonderful. Fernandez and police credit part of the neighborhood improvement to anti-crime events like National Night Out, a nationwide event in which people join with police officers in anti-crime activities like this for one night in communities across the country. It's showing our community that we're taking back the streets. We're showing the people that are causing crime or vandalizing the area and making this place an unsafe place to, to live and work that it is, it's our, it's our area. I want to encourage like families, you know, kids, everyone to come out because you're never too old, you're never too young to make a difference in the community. Each year this national crime fighting event grows bigger. So last year it drew 38 million marchers around the country and this year that number is expected to top 40 million. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. Other police divisions throughout LA are also celebrating National Night Out this week. You can check with your local police station for details. A big boon for Los Angeles as it's been selected yet again to play host to a big conference. Also a respected local journalist is honored upon his retirement and the Festival of Flowers. These stories and more in City Beat. Great news for the local economy as the Entertainment Software Association selects Los Angeles as host city for its Electronic Entertainment Expo or E3 for another three years. The 2012 conference, which was held at the Los Angeles Convention Center in June, resulted in 30,000 total hotel room nights with a $40 million citywide economic impact. That's according to the Los Angeles Tourism and Convention Board. 
The 2013 conference has been set for June 11th to the 13th, so book those hotel rooms. It will mark the 17th time E3 will be held in Los Angeles. Both Councilwoman Jan Perry and Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa released statements applauding the news. Councilman Paul Coretz honored a crucial figure in the history of Los Angeles journalism, yet Locke. Locke recently retired from CNS, or City News Service, a subscriber-based news service that covers news in Southern California. Yet Locke, who is here with his beloved wife, June Liu, um, has just retired as executive vice president of City News Service after 40 years of tremendous leadership and remarkable service. I am greatly honored by this recognition today, and I shall always cherish it. Prior to joining City News Service, Locke was press secretary for the office of Los Angeles Mayor Sam Yorty. Fiesta de las Flores, or the Flower Festival at El Pueblo, recently transformed the entire monument, including Olvera Street, into scenes from Los Angeles's historic past. It's an annual event that attracts amateur and professional photographers alike. The free event featured Aztec dance, folklorico, mariachi, banda, and more. Children were also treated to face painting at the family-friendly festival. City council members and members of the public in council chambers last week got a preview of the 17th annual Central Avenue Jazz Festival when performers gave audiences a little taste of what the festival is all about. And among the performers was Donto James, musician and the son of late jazz great Etta James. Each year on the last weekend of July, we celebrate homegrown talent and jazz greats blues, and Latin jazz with this free music festival that attracts over 35,000 people over the two-day weekend. The annual event highlights the rich culture and heritage of Central Avenue, or The Avenue, as it was known during its heyday from the 1920s to the 1940s. And now that you've had a little taste of the festival, reporter Saida Pagan takes us to Central Avenue for the real deal. The 17th annual Central Avenue Jazz Festival, where folks from all corners of the city came out to experience the summertime tradition. Music lovers from all over Los Angeles gathered on Central Avenue recently, listening to smooth jazz from a variety of local artists. The historic Dunbar Hotel on 42nd and Central served as the perfect backdrop for this year's festivities. The music, the food, and the fun were all part of LA's yearly tribute to the rich culture of Central Avenue. The Avenue, as it is known, has a musical tradition dating back to the 1920s and is considered to be the birthplace of West Coast jazz. LA City Council member Jan Perry helped make the event possible. Right now we have the Los Angeles Unified School District uh, Youth Jazz Band playing on stage and the seats are filling up. There's lots of good food, lots of vendors. Council member Perry's office partnered with a nonprofit coalition for responsible community development to put on this free weekend long festival. Lovely time. Lovely really time. enjoying it. Enjoying the music, food. Can't wait to recommend it to my friends. A highlight of the jazz tribute was this giant display. It shows pictures of area residents who have lived or worked around Central Avenue over the years. Organizers say all of this is a testament to the unifying power of music. For LA This Week, I'm Saida Pagan. Dozens of private, public, and nonprofit sponsors joined forces to make the festival possible. They included the LA Department of Cultural Affairs, the LA Conservation Corps, NBC Universal, and Coca Cola. And in this week's list of things to do an event at the zoo for adults, the Queen of Cabaret at the Bowl, and Olympics for Kids hosted by a local museum. Zoos aren't just fun for kids, there's something for everyone, young and old. 
On Friday, August 10th from 6 to 10 p.m., the zoo is holding its Brew at the Zoo event for those 21 and older. This special event allows zoo guests to tour some of the zoo's most popular habitats, including the new Lair exhibit, while sampling beer from local breweries. Upon arrival, zoo guests will receive a 4.5-ounce collectible sample glass with 14 tickets to exchange for samples. There will also be live entertainment, including musical performances, stand-up comedy, and music from local radio stations. Tickets are expected to sell out and should be purchased ahead of time by going to lazoo.org slash brew. The spectacular icon of stage and screen, the queen of cabaret, Liza Minnelli, returns to the Hollywood Bowl for a special one-night-only appearance on Saturday, August 11th at 8 p.m. The winner of Tony's, Golden Globes, a Grammy, an Emmy, and an Oscar, Minnelli commands the stage with ultimate showbiz star power. The Hollywood Bowl is located at 2301 North Highland Avenue, Hollywood, but you are encouraged to take shuttles to the bowl. For shuttle and ticket information, go to hollywoodbowl.com. London may be the host of the 2012 Summer Olympics, but locally, the Japanese American National Museum is playing host to the Japanese American Olympics on Saturday, August 11th, which will feature fun Japanese American games. You'll get to take part in a Junkin Po or Rock, Paper, Scissors tournament, basketball free throw contest and an origami design contest. There will even be a medals ceremony. The event from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. is part of the museum's 14th annual summer festival on the courtyard and is being held in conjunction with the museum's exhibition, Folding Paper, The Infinite Possibilities of Origami. The Japanese American National Museum is located at 100 North Central Avenue in Little Tokyo. More info can be found at jannm.org. And that's a look at some upcoming things to do. It's hard to get off the couch sometimes and to get moving. That's why One City Leader is making it harder for you to say no by enticing you with the scenic bike ride of our city and an ice cream treat. Cyclists ring in an annual summer tradition. The man at the helm, Councilman Tom Labonge, leads what he calls Tour Labonge every summer, a series of bike rides through different parts of the city that lets people see their neighborhoods on two wheels. Good for your health, number one, and then you see the city in such a way that you don't see driving or or even walk it. It's a beautiful way to see the city. On this night, cyclists, young and old, met up in front of Roosevelt Municipal Golf Course, south of the Greek Theater, to embark on a two-hour bike ride. And they rode in style with LAPD escorts. We got excellent, excellent support from LAPD, and we have our bike officers here. Uh, it was fun. Uh, we were covered all the time by policemen, so it was cool. The hills proved tough for some participants. It was tiring. Lots of hills, up and down. But not to worry. Well, we got a ride for the last quarter, so we're feeling fine. <laughs> Backup vehicles were available to offer a lift to those in need, and at the end of it all, a reward of popsicles and ice cream bars for everyone. But the real treat for many was the ride itself. We ended up by the L.A. River. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty nice down there. The, the river was clean, cleaner than I have seen it in a long time. And they've done a lot of work on it, and it made it a nice bike ride. I'd do it again. Another convert to what city leaders hope will turn into a way of life for all Angelinos. Riders must be at least 12 years of age, and everyone must wear a helmet. There is one more ride left this summer. To find out, go to TomLabonge.com. That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ellen Chang. A reminder that you could catch us online at LACityView.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.
mom, dad. Today's lesson, how to exercise with your kids and save the planet. First, you must believe. B, that your children really are the future. Second, you must do. Instead of jumping in the car, let's go for a walk. Or a run. Or even a bike ride. No pollution, no oil, no gas. And as long as you obey all traffic safety rules, we're cool. Lastly, you have to live. Live into our big, beautiful, healthy future. Be, do, live. Watch the road. G'day, Troy McCoven from North Hollywood. You're watching LA City View, Channel 35, our city, our channel.
Mr. Garcetti, Mr. Perez, Mr. Labonge, Mr. Reyes. Members, if you're in your offices, would you please report to council chambers so that we can start today's proceedings. Sergeants, I need ETAs on these members. Mr. Weezar is here.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Herb Wesson. I'll be the presiding officer for today's council meeting. I want to welcome each and every one of you to the Los Angeles City Council meeting. We meet every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. The public is welcome to join us. If you have uh, something to say, you, you will be afforded the opportunity to speak. If you want to just see how your city council operates, you're welcome as well. At this time, we do not have a quorum as of yet, but every Friday we do presentations. So we're going to begin today's proceedings with the uh, president pro tem of the city council, Mr. Ed Reyes for today's first presentation. Mr. Reyes, the floor belongs to you. Thank you, Council President. Thank you for that introduction. Colleagues, with me today are Javier Gutierrez, President of the Meruelo Group, parent group of Mundo Fox 22, and on his way, Otto Padron, General Manager of Mundo Fox 22. And we are here to announce and to welcome to Los Angeles and to my district in particular, Mundo Fox 22. Let's give a round of applause, folks. The launch of Mundo Fox was announced on January 23rd, 2012. The network which will be the first Spanish language station to be headquartered in Los Angeles, will cater to what we all recognize to be an increased demand for quality Spanish language content in the United States. In 2010, there are 50 million Latinos among the 309 million residents, which account for 16% of our nation's population. Mundo Fox will be a partnership between News Corporation and private broadcaster RCN Television. The Mundo Fox Network will be reaching Latinos across this country, from California to Texas, all the way across to Florida. It will be seen in five of the top 10 Latino markets and cover at least 40% of the U.S. Latino households. Their major affiliate in Los Angeles will be with our own KWHY-TV Channel 22, Canal 22. All this, and they have been formally, and they have not even formally launched the network. In fact, the reason we are here today is that Mundo Fox 22 will officially launch this coming Monday, August 13, 2012, and for that, we congratulate them. Let's give them a big round of applause. That's a big accomplishment. Content for Mundo Fox will be provided by RCN, Fox International Channels, Fox Deportes, who will, be, who will produce its first Spanish language content for the network. Mundo Fox will have its own news division, Noticias Mundo Fox, which will produce a weekday evening program. Today, two live half-hour newscasts will be produced every weekday, one for the East Coast and the other for the West Coast. Members, when we talk about news in Los Angeles, the Latino community is unique in that we tend to feel a real relationship with our news teams. There's a trust that comes with each and every broadcast and news anchors. So when we talk about Los Angeles, most trusted news anchors, we have to talk about professionals such as Palmira Perez. Palmira is one of those voices that our community turns to for informative, reliable, and most importantly, trusted information that impacts our lives. So I want to offer her a special welcome to our council chambers. We also have with us Franchella Perez, who is the meteorologist, Jesse Nunez, Primero Efforts uh, Director, Prime, oh yes, and Tommy Trujillo, Director 
of finance, and, and of course, Palmira. So, Palmira, would like to share a few words with us? Of course. Please. Of course, of course. Well, first, good morning, and thank you. I'm so happy to end this week here with all of you. And you know the history of Channel 22. You've been through all our changes. So finally, we are with Mundo Fox, and we have all the support from different people from different markets, and we're so proud to tell you that the next Mar Monday, Monday, you will have a national newscast made it in L.A. No Miami anymore. Not New York. <laughs> L.A. So please give us more news every day, okay? We're still working for you, and thank you for everything. And you know me. I'm Palmira Perez, and I'm always here to help and to help the community for sure, and to help our politics too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Palmira. And I told you Otto will be joining us, and he has Otto Padron. He's the general manager of Mundo Fox 22. I don't know how to follow that. I'm coming from Miami. <laughs> But I am truly honored to be amongst all of you honored elected officials and guests. Uh, as a f former Miamian, I can say that it is an honor uh, to be in front of you and to commemorate this day that means so much for us Latinos across the United States, not just here in Los Angeles, the, the real capital of Latinos in the U.S., but as a Latino also who has, uh, as you, has served uh, our country, uh, your city. And I am honored to say, as Palmira said, uh, that on the 13th, we will turn a new chapter in the story of this entertainment town. Uh, but this time it will be in Spanish. And in the words of Hernan Lopez, Emiliano Sacone, and the uh, very same Rupert Murdoch, he is honored to be leading this charge to represent the community that has been so important in this city and in this country. I am honored to be here. I am honored to receive on behalf of the Meruelo family this incredible honor once again recognize Channel 22 in one of its uh, chapters going forward. Muchas gracias a todos ustedes por reconocernos y a todos ustedes por darnos esta oportunidad de hablar y hablar en español en una ciudad que se lo merece porque aquí es donde nace la lengua nuestra y aquí es donde se continuará. Gracias. Thank you. I'd also like to introduce you, Javier Gutierrez, President of Morello Group. Javier? Councilman, thank you very much. Come on, let's give him a round of applause as well. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Councilman. Uh, on behalf of the Morello Group, as the owners of Canal 22 and as the, uh, the Latino-owned firm here based in Los Angeles, we are very proud to be here announcing this major addition to the landscape of Spanish language media and to be basing it here. Uh, with all of our businesses being based here in Los Angeles, this was truly an honor for us to bring this network to this great, wonderful city in which we have built a lot of our uh, success. We are very humbled to be able to serve this community. We are very humbled at your recognition and just wanted to thank you on behalf of the ownership. Thank you very much. So with that, I'd like to present Mr. Reyes. Before you oh. present, there are colleagues of yours that would like to say a few words, beginning with Mr. Wiesar. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. And uh, first, I want to say congratulations to all of you at Mundo Fox. This is just a welcoming news for the city of Los Angeles that you are located in the city and that uh, you have brought together a great team from the Morello companies to a wonderful newscast that they've shown uh, that they have gotten the trust of the public here in the city of L.A., uh, the confidence uh, that you have given to us in terms of the news you have given to us, to a uh, general manager that brings with him a lot of experience, Odo Patron, congratulations to you, you all. We are excited. And if you think about the Latino community, and it's one of the largest growing populations in the United States, it's importance to the future of this country. It's important that we get this population the information, we provide them good programming, and the product that we're seeing here is, I think, very innovative and not only a great thing for the city of L.A., not only for this country, but internationally 
given all the different types of Latinos that come to this city and call this their home. Congratulations to you all. I look forward to working with you. And uh, Mr. President, uh, may we also uh, one day uh, probably uh, work with them to have a bilingual programming one way or another with the city council as well. Would love to do that. <laughs> love to do that. <laughs> right. Mr. Garcetti. Mr. LeBron, Thank you very much, relax. Mr. Pre Mr. You. Garcetti, you know Tom is on the key. I know. So it's he, very difficult. Tom, just, Tom you want to go first? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let, go ahead. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I just want to say that. To the Since you gave it to me, brother, I just think, Ed Reyes, this is great news. And what's great news is for the first district. This is going to be right at 5th and Bixel in the heart of Los Angeles. Not in Hollywood, Eric. Not in West Los Angeles, but in the heart where the people of the city live. And as Mr. Weezar said, that fine graduate of Salesian High School and all the things that's good on the east side. Go Mustangs. You are at a place where you're providing information, which is knowledge, which is power. And that is the key to the world today. Information is knowledge, is power. Congratulations. Thank you, Tom. And uh, before I turn it over to Mr. Garcetti, if you guys just give LaBange a little airtime, your viewership will increase based on his energy alone. And Mr. Mr. Garcetti. And, and if you guarantee him a half hour, he will learn Spanish fluently. I guarantee you he will do that. But uh, congratulations, felicidades. Thank you, Mr. Reyes, for bringing a great, great team here. Obviously, Channel 2 has had an amazing presence here for a long time. And Javier and the entire team, Palmira, everybody who's been a part of our lives here, taking this to the next level. And congratulations, you've graduated to a much better city. Miami's a wonderful second-tier city, but now you are you're in the Latino capital of the United States of America. So it's something to be very proud of. But we are very excited, too. We've been a city of firsts, from the pobladores that came here. You know, all of us are Latino in this city because we had folks who came here speaking Spanish who were black, who were brown, who were white, and who came from Asia originally, from 1769 when they first came here. All Spanish subjects, but you see that diversity in our flags, in our symbol. It has been a category that has always poured the world into it. And so as we look at Mundo, at the world, what you are building here and what the Morello family and Fox is doing together, I think, is making that same history. So, you know, somos americanos como tú. Soy americano como tú. That's, I know, part of the campaign. But we are all Americans, just like you are. And we're all angelino, angelinos, too. So somos uh, angelinos también hoy. Felicidades. And thanks so much, Mr. Reyes. Thank you. Mr. Reyes. Uh, to close, I'd like to invite the other anchor who has joined us. Uh, Rolando, please come on up. Thank you, Mr. President and Honorable Chamber. It's a great honor. It's a pleasure. I, I am the one that will be delivering the nightly, uh, nightly national news for, for Mundo Fox. So uh, doing it out of Los Angeles is a great honor. It's something that we in, in the industry as a, as a broadcaster and as a journalist, we always fought and we, we always believed that uh, you know, the heart of our community is certainly in Los Angeles and we're very, very happy that Mundo Fox and the Meruelo Group and this whole entity decided to do the network newscast and be based out of Los Angeles. So that is, that is, that is a great pride. And, and, and real quick, um, one, of the favorite, one of my favorite movies is A Walk in the Clouds, and there is a scene in the movie where the father says to, uh, to, to the young soldier that is, that is walking around and trying to marry his daughter, he says, look, son, not because I speak with an accent, it means that I think with an accent. I remember when I, when I saw that scene in that movie, it made me feel very comfortable, and it made me realize that not because we speak with an accent, it means that we think with an accent. Not because it is in Spanish, it means that it's of less quality. And that's, that's certainly uh, our commitment to, to you guys, our commitment to this community, that our newscast and our product and what we're doing on a daily basis is just as good, if not better, than what, what the competition is doing out there. Thank you very much. Thank you for this recognition. It's a great honor. And, and Mr. Reyes, before you start, I want you to know, Ed, move, move a little bit. It's an honor for me to meet another man who has Walk in the Clouds as one of his favorite movies. Keanu Reeves, I loved uh, yes. Anthony Quinn. I mean, I... And I cried. There are a couple of scenes where I cried. As well, well, that I am not going to admit to. <laughs> not on television, but uh, it, I enjoy that movie, Walk in the Clouds. Okay, Mr. Ray is to close. Thank you, Cross President. When he says you move, you move, right? Uh, but with that, I'd like to ask our anchors, Palmira and Rolando, to come on up. This state's certificate of recognition is hereby presented to Mundo Fox, 
on behalf of the City of Los Angeles, we extend our warmest wishes and welcome you to the First Council District in the City of Los Angeles. With much honor and great joy, congratulations. Again, congratulations to you all. Mr. Clerk, I believe, and I've been wrong before, but I believe we do have a quorum. Would you please call the roll? Aller Combusque, Eno Cardinus, England, or Garcetti, Weezer, Koreska, Corian, LaBanche, Parks, Prairie, Reyes, Rosenthal, Zion, West, and 10 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, first order of business. Approval of the minutes. Mr. Buscaino moves, correct, seconds. Next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Uh, Krikorian moves, Garcetti seconds. Mr. President, would you like to run through the agenda? I would like to go through the agenda. Why don't we start off with items one through seven? Very good, sir. Before doing so, uh, there has been a request from member to continue item five to August 31st. Again, with that's item five to August 31st. Without objection. So where are we now? Uh, Mr. President, that brings us to items one through seven. Uh, they are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, without objection, those items are now before us. Okay, um, specials, members, Mr. Koretz. Uh, item five. Item five has been continued to uh, October 31st. Uh, members, any other? Specials by members. What about cards, Mr. Clerk? Do we have Ms. cards from the public? Yes, sir, we do, Mr. President. We have cards on items one, two, six, and seven. One, two, six, and seven. Okay. Uh, and that's it's a short agenda today? Yes, sir. Okay, so that means we can finish with our presentations. Or uh, Mr. President, pardon me. We, first, we must vote on the remaining items, which are items three and four. Okay, let's... Uh, Prepare to vote, Madam Clerk. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Okay. Members, uh, Mr. I know Mr. Labange and Mr. Weezar, we have some presentations, but if you guys would trust me, I want to do, just give me a few minutes, I want to get through these few general public comment cards. So I'm going to call the four people and ask you to come forward. J.L. Stern, Kenneth Robinson, Arnold Sachs, Michael Carrion. So if I called your name, please come forward. And as soon as you get to the mic, you can just identify yourself and begin your public comment. My name is J.L. Stern. I've been researching local issues as part of my candidacy for State Assembly District 46. I'm very concerned about the Woodman Avenue median retrofit project in Panorama City. This is a project initiated by City of Los Angeles that lies within the Council District 6, represented by Councilman Cardenas. I wholeheartedly endorse harvesting precipitation, rainfall, that otherwise would be lost to the ocean. However, the Woodman project is more likely to result in saturation of near-surface soils with the potential for soil liquefaction in the event of even a moderate earthquake than it is to, change, to charge the groundwater aquifer. The project is under construction on Woodman Avenue between Lenark and Satakoy Streets. It is apparently too late to stop the project and redirect the conservation efforts elsewhere. Nevertheless, by my appearance before the Council today, my concerns are now part of the public record. In the event of property damage, personal injury, or death due to soil liquefaction in an earthquake in an area approximately one square mile generally south and west of the project, responsibility and liability for repair or compensation must lie squarely with the City of Los Angeles. Written copies of this statement with supporting documentation are available for each council member. I'll be available to answer questions about it, should you so desire. If you would please have a clerk. Sergeant, this. Sergeants, would you please come here as documents for us? And thank you, uh, Mr. Stern, and good luck to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Robinson. Yes. <clears throat> please come forward. 
Uh, you'll have to excuse me, I'm nursing a root canal. <clears throat> we all have probably visited that situation, but uh, what brings me here today, I'm the nephew of uh, Dr. Ralph Bunch, the uh, arguably UCLA's most distinguished scholar, and of course, uh, the uh, unarguably the UN's most effective no negotiator and Nobel Prize winner. Uh, I received a call a couple of weeks ago that the Bunch House, which is under the authority of the uh, city of Los Angeles, was in a state of disrepair. Um, I tore myself away from my responsibilities fundraising for LA City College Bunch, uh, the Bunch uh, Scholars. Uh, when I got there on a fact-finding mission, I found it overrun with weeds. Uh, some of the residents there were complaining. Um, to make it short, this is no way to treat the legacy of a man of the stature of Ralph J. Bunch. I myself made six calls to Jan Perry's office. None of them were returned. And I, I'll take it a step further. I understand there are members of this council who are UCLA alums. Never, ever violate that sacred trust between an alumnus and an alma mater that uh, stands between you that would allow your most prominent scholar to be treated with such disrespect. My family is outraged, as they should be. Uh, I passed by the Loomis House, the Banning House, the uh, Bradbury Building, and they're I immaculate. Um, I would like to be able to report to the matriarch of my family that something is being done about this. Uh, I have my card, and if someone is willing to uh, accept this responsibility, I would appreciate it. Uh, thank I myself thank you. Thank you. Ms. Perry's on the queue. And I, I am sorry that you had to witness that. We are in a state of transition and putting another nonprofit in there to run the Ralph Bunch House. And I'd be happy to give you and your family a briefing, although I do know some members of your family. Uh, and I think they've been involved in the past. Um, if you would give us your contact information, I'll be happy to contact you. And uh, I, I did not get any of your messages, but I normally call everybody back. So, yeah. So if you could just go over to the side and exchange those uh, numbers. Mr. Sachs, followed by Michael. Mr. Arnold Sachs. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Arnold Sachs. I wanted to comment on a few different things. Unfortunately, I lost some paperwork. But one of the things I wanted to comment on was recently there's been some newspaper stories regarding um, some work done on Caltrans property. They're putting up signs for universities in the valley along a section of the 101 freeway. And the reason I bring that up is because there's also been some stories in the newspapers regarding for-profit schools that are having students take out loans, government loans, for exorbitant amounts for their education and then being on the hook for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Now, the story regarding Caltrans mentioned a speaker, not unfortunate, like I said, I don't have the article, but he mentioned that having the sign on the freeway legitimizes the school. But if the schools are for profit colleges and the colleges are running up these tabs on public loans, why is LA dealing with Caltrans and not saying, hey, listen, why don't you find out this background information? Why are you legitimizing these schools these basically diploma mills that are running up the tab on the public dollar. What's going on? Who's stepping up? You know, we heard all this stuff about banks and their foreclosures. Well, this is part B, student loans and not being able to pay. That being said, there was some discussion regarding A and B, the tragedy that occurred in in Colorado a couple of weeks ago with a shooting and people taking kids to their movie at midnight and then the discussion regarding skateboarding and kids without helmets and this is in today's LA Times in the calendar section a review of the Nicki Minaj concert Minaj and label mate Tyga one of the three pulled an eight-year-old up on the stage eight years old I'll bet they thank you Thank you, Mr. Sachs. 
Okay, Michael, carry on. Thank you. Here we are again. The gentleman over here speaking about the weeds in his community. These are the weeds in my community. Okay? This is in Ed Reyes' district. Yet Ed Reyes was told about this and refused to do this in a timely fashion. I had to come here and complain and complain and complain and show pictures. Then he lied and said it was done when it wasn't done. So I show the pictures to everybody just so they can see them. One picture's worth a thousand words. This here is Ed Reyes' pet project. It's an empty lot now. As you can all see, it has graffiti, weeds, and everything else. This is called the Via Via project, which he's going to put a restaurant here. If you notice in the back right here, that's a daycare center. And the law says you can't have sell liquor 500 feet from a school. Right across the street is Lincoln High School. Right across the street from that is an elementary school. And kitty corner to that is a church, a mosque. Yet Mr. Reyes pulled all kinds of strings and wanted to give them a liquor license and allow them to sell liquor. My question is why? So they can have a couple of beers before they pick up their kids from kindergarten? Shame on Mr. Reyes. People look at me like if I'm upset. I'm, these are the facts. They speak for themselves. All we ask for is that the city clean up its property like they ask us to clean up ours. A council member is only a representative, and when you call his office and you tell him, this is a picture of my son, he's six feet tall, look at the weeds there. There is a sidewalk beside him that you can't see. And Mr. Reyes said they were full of syringes. Yet, he had people cleaning. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Good to see you. Okay, uh, Mr. City Attorney, as of this moment, general public comment is closed. Okay, with that said, Mr. LaBange. Mr. LaBange, Assistant President Pro Tem, has the floor. Thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause for our president, Mr. Herb Wesson, right there. And all we start off this morning, let's have a good one right there. Get warmed up. Appreciate it. We got a little quick music right here. We want to make this great mayor of Nagoya, Japan, very happy as we welcome our mayor, Takashi Kuramura. Oh, From your desk as Mr. We Mr. There. LeBange, before you begin, yes. again, okay. uh, today Mr. Weezar will be introducing a motion 
that will prohibit you from singing. Hey. Not the mayor, but you will be prohibited okay. right. from singing in council chambers. Okay, now, Thank you very now much. I return to you, but no more singing. Well, I, I thought you did like my speeches, so you thought you liked my singing. It all works <laughs> together, because we have our oldest, our oldest sister city in Nagoya, Japan, and that was Hugh Sakamoto in uh, 1964. Classic hit throughout Japan, still a cultural hit, but also uh, in 1964, number one hit in America as well. But this great mayor is a great friend of Los Angeles. Uh, we're joined here by our very special guest, uh, who is our ongoing uh, leader of our Nagoya sister city, uh, Ernest Hilda, right here, who's with us. Give Ernest a big hand. And Mayor, uh, before Ernest speaks to introduce some guests, I want uh, you, you're a great singer and I loved it, I uh, want you uh, to say a little hello uh, to our sister city of Los Angeles. Yeah. Singing? By singing? Yeah, we'll sing it. You can sing. No, you right. can't. You, oh. He'll rule the you, same you, way. Band. That's, you will get the same. band. We'll yes. get your translator right uh, here. What is it? Yeah, yeah. Good. There we go. Right here. What is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet uh, Mr. Harv J. Uh, Wilson, Jr., uh, Mr. Tom Rabonje, and everyone gathered here today. Uh, I'm Takashi Kamala, the mayor of Nagoya, Los Angeles City, uh, sister city uh, in Japan. I am honored and pleased to have the privilege of speaking uh, during the public comment period. Uh, three years ago, uh, I, I came to Los Angeles to celebrate the 15th anniversary of sister city affiliation between Nagoya and Los Angeles. During that visit, I stood here and uh, declared that I would implement the first resident tax cut uh, in Japan and the creation of the first neighborhood committees in Japan, which uh, were the two big fe features of my election platform, uh, platform. Today, I'm proud to be able to come back and say uh, that I have implemented the residence tax cut. It's the first time in Japan and the creation of the neighborhood committee. Good job. Yeah. Uh, talking about uh, tax cut, the city assembly against me and voted down five times. It was a uh, very hard time, but I go through it. Uh, I carried out it, yes. The sister, the sister city affiliation between Nagoya and Los Angeles was the first such relationship for each uh, city. The two cities have strengthened friendship over half a century since the commencement of sister city affiliation in 1959. In September of the year, Nagoya suffered damage due to the Isebe typhoon, which killed 5,000 people. But uh, we immediately received uh, relief donations and emergency provisions from Los Angeles. Nagoya residents who lost their families and homes were very grateful, and uh, Los Angeles gave them a great deal of hope and dreams. Nagoya, too, sent relief m money to use to support the people of Los Angeles when it was affected by the uh, the best in Great Los Angeles earthquake in 1987 and the uh, Northridge earthquake in 1994. These, uh, uh, these acts of friendship exchanged between Nagoya and Los Angeles are engraved in our city's history. When we were hit by the Great East Japan earthquake in March uh, 2011, uh, we again received warm support uh, from our friends in Los Angeles. The thousands of origami cranes and uh, banner created by the university high school students, as well as their message of encouragement, were presented through Nagoya to a school in a greatly demanded, uh, damaged area. The project of 10, uh, 1,000 cranes planned by Barnes Door Arts and supported by Councilman Labonje is now exhibited in Nagoya, 
conveying uh, people's free feelings to pray for Japan from our, city, city, uh, from our sister city, Los Angeles. Allow me to take this opportunity to express my great gratitude for your warm support on behalf of Japanese citizens. Now let me introduce Nagoya, located in the center of Japan. Nagoya is a large city with a population of 2.25 million. In terms of industry, the manufacturing industry of such things as automobiles, machine tools, mother machines, uh, and uh, aerospace are thriving, and uh, their uh, advanced technology is uh, attracting attention from business whole world, worldwide. Nagoya is also a very attract attractive city for tourism, being home to much historical heritage, including Nagoya Castle and Atsuta Shrine, which has a uh, 1,900 year history. Nagoya is the city of samurai warriors, and is the, it is the center of religion which produces many famous samurai generals. Uh, 2010 marks the uh, 400th year since the beginning of the construction of Nagoya Castle. Uh, which was also the beginning of Nagoya's development as a city. I brought three feudal roads, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, Tokugawa Ieyasu, and Kato Kiyomasa. They are here to take part in the Nisei Week Parade and uh, advertise Nagoya in Los Angeles. They will be performing in Nisei Week Festival events, so please look forward to it. Uh, still, Fresh in our memories are the commemorative events celebrating the 15th anniversary of our sister city affiliation in 2009. I hope to continue this long lasting friendship, which will be further strengthened as we celebrate the 16th, 17th, and, the, and even 100th anniversary as good friends of citizens of Los Angeles. Citizens of Nagoya look forward to have more exchanges in the, in the future. I ask for your support and cooperation in this regard. I am looking forward to seeing you in Nagoya. Thank you very much for this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, um, I've had the pleasure to visit your city. Okay. I, I went to uh, one of the castles. Where, that had been converted to a museum. I was there at the time of the year. That's a very, very happy time. I think it was close to the Christmas holidays Christmas when, holidays. when employees would receive bonus checks. They would get bonuses, and so oh, it was oh. just a, a very happy time to be there. Mr. Levon, you have two other members on the queue. Mr. Weezar, followed by Ms. Perry. Thank you very much, Mr. President. First, I want to thank Mr. Labange for working as a representative from the city uh, to continue to strengthen this bond that we have with Nagoya. If you look at all the sister cities that we have throughout the world, I think one of the strongest we have is with Nagoya. It's one of the first, and it continues to be the strongest. And for that, we appreciate that, and we welcome you once again to the city of Los Angeles. I, too, had the pleasure of visiting Nagoya, uh, and uh, you treated our Los Angeles delegation with open arms. Uh, and it, was, it felt like we were seeing our brothers and sisters once again. And so that bond is strong. Let's continue to work together. Uh, we have a long history uh, here in Los Angeles as one, at one time, probably next to Seattle, having the largest Japanese Americans living in the city of Los Angeles. And I will see you at the Nisei Week Parade. I look forward to it. As a young boy, I spent a lot of time in little Tokyo. I know a lot about the Japanese culture. I used to deliver one of the largest Japanese American newspapers, the Rafu Shimpu, as a young boy. All my family worked there, um, so to me, the Japanese culture uh, means a lot. I've learned a lot from it, and one of my mentors who uh, helped me get to college and get through college is a Japanese immigrant to the United States, and for that, I for, will for always be grateful. Welcome to the Los Angeles City once again. Miss Perry. 
Mr. Mayor, I had the pleasure of joining you in Nagoya, and you were a wonderful host, very gracious. It is a beautiful city with lots of electric and clean natural gas vehicles, and you know, the air quality was beautiful. Most of all, the streets were clean and beautiful. People were extremely friendly, and it's the kind of city that we should emulate. Uh, I was very impressed. I had to be very careful crossing the street because it was so quiet. Uh, because there were so many electric vehicles out there that you didn't hear the cars or buses coming, especially the municipal trucks. I know you will bring your energy and your enthusiasm to the parade on Sunday, and I know you have a good time because uh, I was able to ride with you once before, and uh, I look forward to seeing you and hearing you sing on Sunday, as you always do. Uh, thank you very much. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't hear the phone in love. That was stressful. <laughs> Mr. Labange. Yeah, and Mr. President, we also want to recognize, as uh, both Ms. Perry and Mr. Wezar said, and I, uh, there's no question Nagoya is the outstanding sister city that it is. Ernest Hill is the president. We have some exchange students. He's going to introduce them very quickly right now. Ernest, come on up right now right, for this yeah, great yeah. introduction of our delegation as well as the students. Good morning. My name is Ernest Hida, and it's really an honor to be serve as a chair of the Los Angeles Nagoya Sister City Affiliation in representing the city of Los Angeles in our Sister City relationship with Nagoya. And I'd like to thank you also for the support you have given to the 25 sister cities that we have for Los Angeles. And now I'd like to uh, introduce the rest of the delegation members. First is Mr. Yoshihiko Niwa. Deputy Director General or the Deputy oh. Chief of Staff, Office of the Mayor. Good job. <laughs> Mr. Yoshiyuki Kumazawa, Director, General Affairs Department, Nagoya Port Authority. Port. <laughs> Mr. Toshimitsu Miyajima, Director, International Relations Division, Office of the Mayor. <laughs> Mr. Jun Suzuki, Chief, International Relations Division. Office of the Mayor. Mr. Osami Ishikawa, staff writer, the Chunichi newspaper of Nagoya. And Mr. Yutaro Uchida, officer, International Relations Division, Office of the Mayor. And this year in our student exchange program, we have, we're hosting four students from Nagoya and their teacher chaperone, and I'd like to have them stand for recognition. And for our student exchange program last year, uh, from Los Angeles, we had four students and their uh, teacher chaperone. We would like to have them stand for recognition. They're in their in their uh, the Valley Nagoya City uh, polo shirt. So thank you very much. And as we close, Mr. President, we thank you. The last introduction to the great Norman Hour Carl from the Port of Los Angeles. As Ernest mentioned, our ports are sister ports. Uh, it's a great friendship, Mayor. Great, uh, great to have you here and everybody. Let's give Nagoya a big, big, big hand. Okay, right. okay thank you, Mr. Labange. Mr. Wizar. Mr. President, before I go up to make my presentation, if I could welcome to these chambers a group of high school students who are participating in the Chicano Latino Youth Leadership Project, the Los Angeles Institute. Uh, these young people are involved in a conference oh. for a few days. If you could please stand up and give them a big round of applause as we welcome them to the council chambers. Uh, they are learning about uh, local government, and I want to congratulate them for participating in the program that will provide them some additional insight as to uh, what they can do in their future careers should they decide to work for government, for the private sector, or whatever it may be. Uh, let's give these young boys and girls another big round of applause. Thank you for being here today, and welcome to the chambers. Mr. Weezar, the center aisle belongs to you. Well, thank you, Mr. President, and uh, I want to <clears throat> once again uh, welcome to these chambers our good friend. He's no stranger to our uh, to the city, to our chambers, uh, the great Council General de Ecuador in Los Angeles, Eddie Bedón Orbe. Bienvenido de nuevo. And um, we're here once again to uh, celebrate, uh, along with the many Ecuadorians who live in the city of Los Angeles, their anniversary. Uh, in becoming an independent country 
from Spain. They have now uh, been independent for about 203 years. And while the majority of Ecuadorian immigrants uh, in the United States live in places like New York, New Jersey, Florida, California has a sizable community and a lot of them, if not the majority of them, live here in Los Angeles. And this is why we join here today to celebrate and recognize our Ecuadorian community who have contributed greatly to our rich history and diversity, uh, which makes Los Angeles the most diverse city in the nation, if not the world. And each year, Ecuadorians commemorate the de Declaration of Independence, which began in the small city of Quito after nearly 300 years of Spanish colonization. It was there on August 10th, 1809, that the first call for independence from Spain was made in Latin America. Also Mr. Weezer, let me stop you for a minute. Why don't you all stand up? All of everyone that's here. Come on, it's, it's a great shot. Come closer. It's a great, it's just great for us to see all of you. Sorry, uh, Mr. Weezer, but I really wanted them to be part of this presentation. That was fine. I only have eyes in front of me, not behind me. Did, couldn't see what was happening behind me. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> And uh, it was in August 10, 1809, as I said, that uh, it was one of the first calls for independence from Spain from all the countries that they had colonized. And it is known as El Primer Grito de la Independencia. In other words, the first call for independence. Quito's nickname is Luz de America, and it comes from the idea that Quito inspired many of the other Latin American countries to also call for their independence. And I'm happy to have with me here today many members, which Mr. our President recognized and came up to our podium uh, from the Ecuadorian community to celebrate this. As you can see, they are proud, they are wearing their country's colors, and they are beaming with light as they come here to these chambers to once again celebrate the Independence Day. I also want to give a special thanks, because uh, this wouldn't be possible without the hard work of Alba Beruz, yes, uh, founder, yes. and co let's give her a big round of applause. Yes, She's the founder and coordinator of the Fiestas Patrias in Los Angeles, and she is involved with us to not only have this event here in the chambers, but to prepare the annual uh, parade that we have down Broadway. So with that, let me invite you all, first of all, to the Ecuadorian parade, which is this Sunday. It will take place along Broadway and 8th Street, and it begin on Broadway and 8th Street and end at El Pueblo, where there will be a cultural festival. The parade will begin at 11 a.m. All are welcome. I try to make it out every year, and it is just a wonderful thing to see as Ecuadorians come from throughout the region to celebrate this wonderful cultural and uh, event. So with that, let me present to the Council General of Ecuador uh, a resolution from the City of Los Angeles once again commemorating the independence of Ecuador from Spain nearly 203 years ago. And we want to not only commemorate that with you, but thank you for your participation in the civic life of Los Angeles and the many contributions that Ecuadorians have made to the city of Los Angeles. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Wiesar, before, and before you speak, Ms. Perry is on the queue. Ms. Perry. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And I wanted to thank Ms. Baruz for her hard work for so many years and continuing the parade and, and working together with the entire community. I just wanted to tell you how much I'm looking forward to participating on Sunday. It is always a very precious experience uh, to see people from Ecuador lining the sidewalks, waving the flags and uh, celebrating uh, their country, their culture, their history, and I'm happy to be a part of it. But I know how hard you've worked for so many years in bringing people together and increasing the participation and the turnout for the parade because parades are hard work and it takes years to build them. So it's going to be fun on Sunday and everybody should wear a hat. <laughs> Sound advice, Mr. Garcetti. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Wiesar, for doing this. It was a grand honor of mine to be the 
padrino de desfile a couple of years ago and uh, to have an incredible Ecuadorian population in my district, to have spent time personally in Ecuador as well and to travel and to see the beauty of the country uh, from the Galapagos all the way to uh, the Amazon. Ecuador is an amazing presence here in Los Angeles and Los Angeles is one of the great Ecuadorian cities of the world. And when we think of our, ourselves as an Ecuadorian city, we begin to understand the contributions to culture, to business, to art, uh, to food, my favorite Ecuadorian restaurants. And I don't want to name them by names because I know I'll offend somebody else by not choosing theirs, but we have some amazing ones in Council District 13, let's say on Silver Lake Boulevard and Virgil and other places. But we have some incredible, incredible assets to be able to see. You said it. Now. <laughs> We have some incredible assets to celebrate, and I just want to join you. It's an incredible celebration that we have. So proud to be part of the Ecuadorian community here, and uh, to our Consul General, to the business community, and to our, our leaders in the community. Thank you for what you do to make sure that we understand that history here in Los Angeles that is shared together. Here's to freedom, to liberty, to democracy, and to a great, great country. Viva Ecuador. Viva. Viva. Mr. Reyes. I want to say felicidades. This was, I remember back in the late 90s when it was on Pico Boulevard. Yes, yes. And the growing days, the growing pains you went through. Yes, yes. To see now on Broadway, as big as it is today, is a tribute to you and the hard work of the whole team. So felicidades and have a great parade. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Council General, the floor is yours, sir. Good morning. I'm sorry I have to talk in Spanish. Honorable Herb Wesson, Presidente del Consejo de la Ciudad. Honorable Herb Wesson, President of City Council. Distinguidos miembros del Consejo de la Ciudad. Distinguished members of the City of Los Angeles. Señores concejales. Esteemed council members. Amigos invitados especiales. Friends, invitees, special guests. Como ustedes conocen, el Ecuador está celebrando 203 años del primer grito de independencia. As many of you already know, El Ecuador celebrating 203 years of its first call for independence from Spain. En Hispanoamérica. In Latin America. Este hecho histórico sirvió de ejemplo para que pueblos hermanos this historic fact was a great start and sound example for our sister countries sigan el sendero de la libertad to follow the walkway to liberty que posteriormente se selló en forma definitiva el 24 de mayo de 1822 which consequently was celebrated to its full extent on May 24th, 1822 no he venido únicamente a hablar de Esta importante fecha cívica para el Ecuador. I'm not here just to speak about this import, very important civic date for Ecuador. He venido a hablar sobre la comunidad ecuatoriana. I'm also here to speak about the Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian community. Y quería decirles que aquí en la ciudad de Los Ángeles, en el estado de California, hay una numerosa Comunidad ecuatoriana. And I would like to share with you that here in the state of California and in the city of Los Angeles, there resides a great number of Ecuadorians. Integrada por artistas, intelectuales, empresarios, comerciantes, obreros, banqueros y políticos de origen ecuatoriano. And it consists of artists, intellectual individuals, businessmen, um, que, um, also bankers and laborers, and all this consists of the great community that resides now in this city. Quería agradecer por el permanente apoyo que da la ciudad de Los Ángeles, sus concejales a la comunidad ecuatoriana y latinoamericana. I would like to thank you and truly state that we're very grateful of the great support that you provide, not only to the Ecuadorians, but also to the Latin American community. California sigue siendo el estado o el bastión de defensa de los derechos de nuestros migrantes. California continues to be the great supporter and the great defender of our liberties for all people. Gracias por su trabajo en este sentido. Thank you for your work in this respect. Y quisiera solicitarles de la manera más respetuosa. 
And I would like to respectfully request que siga en la lucha to continue the fight por conseguir una reforma migratoria to be able to obtain a, an immigration reform que permita la regularización de 13 millones de ciudadanos indocumentados que viven y trabajan en este país. That will allow the legalization of 13 million of undocumented workers and residents who live in this country. Mi agradecimiento y mi corazón a todos ustedes. I'm truly grateful and my heart warm thanks to all of you. Y quiero agradecer de manera especial al honorable José Huiza. And I would like to especially thank honorable José Huiza. Atención a este evento. Muchas gracias. Viva Los Ángeles. Viva el Ecuador. Muchísimas gracias, Consul, y siempre tiene su casa aquí en este cabildo, pero también, como saben, sabemos, todos los inmigrantes que venimos de todos los países, todos los ángeles en nuestra casa también. Y no hay que sentirnos de todo, de cualquier otro modo, aunque hablamos en inglés o el español, aquí se acepta todo en esta gran ciudad de Los Ángeles. Gracias, Consul, por, su, por sus palabras. Gracias a ti. Uh, and Mr. President, you uh, will allow me. Uh, we have a number of representatives uh, from Ecuador who are visiting uh, us today, and we will have one of them speak. Uh, but I do want to ask uh, as well if uh, maybe after the speaker we present who they are. But we do have with us today Al Alcalde de Colta, Edmel Tayupanda, who will share some words. Please give him a big round of applause and welcome him to the city of Los Angeles. Señor alcalde, señores concejales, desde mi lindo Ecuador, Mr. Mayor, un saludo and esteemed council a mis compatriotas, from my country, al señor cónsul, like, al señor alcalde, countrymen, del cantón mayor, Balsar, a la vicealcaldesa del cantón Durán. Mayor of canton Durán. Estamos tres alcaldes de 221 alcaldes que tiene mi país. We three mayors of 203 Hemos venido that dando ese respaldo a los compatriotas que está presente con la doña Alba. We're here to provide support along with my countrymen who are supporting Ms. Doña Alba. Y estaremos siempre como autoridades de Ecuador. As Representatives of authorities from Ecuador will always be supporting, dando esa fuerza, ese valor, providing that force en, that in cada uno de los estados, in each one of the states, y en diferentes países, and throughout different countries. Estoy muy agradecido, I'm very grateful, por el señor concejal, to Mr. Council y member, y todos los concejales que están atentos, and all of you, rest honorable council members, who are very attentive. Ecuador, un país chiquito, pero de corazón grande. Even though Ecuador is a small country, we have a very big heart. Y siempre un ecuatoriano, vaya donde vaya, and en always, el mundo, always, when you see an Ecuadorian go siempre the world, alzamos la bandera. We always raise our flag. Ahí está, señor alcalde. There's Mr. Nuestra Council bandera, President. Here's our de tres colores. Three colors, which consists of three colors. Yo soy de un pueblo indígena. I come from an indigenous town. Y como alcalde de mi pueblo de 45 mil habitantes, and as mayor of my town, which consists of 45 lo voy a hablar en Quichua. Pa, uh, members, I will speak in Quichua language. Dios solo pagichi, yucanchi, chamuscanchi, Ecuador, yactamanta, caipi causa, yucanchi, ecuatoriano, conata, saludangapa, su respaldo, tarico chingapa, chamuscanchi. Maita Rish Papi, señor Conchica, como ecuatoriano, canchi, indígenas, canchi, saita Rikuchinchi. Saita Nish Papi, Dios solo pague, Nini, punta pica Dios. Si vos se pica tu cuigunata, saludas pa, Dios solo pague, Nini. Thank you very much. Ok.
Como dije, todas las idiomas son aceptadas aquí en la ciudad de Los Ángeles. All languages are welcomed in the city of Los Angeles. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, we, uh, the gentleman did introduce the other uh, mayors of the cities from Ecuador. We want to welcome once again. And thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, council members. No, thank you, and congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Labange, if you could give me one minute. We're going to go to item seven. Uh, Mr. Sachs, if you could begin to make your way to the podium. And if Michael Carrion is around, Michael, I'm going to call your uh, item that you wanted to speak on next. So I'm going to do item seven as soon as the crowd thins. Mr. Sachs, is Michael still here? Mr. Arnold Sachs on item seven. Mr. Yeah, yeah. Sachs, Arnold Sachs. Yes, thank you. Good morning again, Arnold Sachs. Um, my question here, or my comments regard on this item, you're transferring $40,000 from the reserve fund, um, which is money reverted back to the general fund. And that's the topic of my questioning here, is the reserve fund versus the general fund, and the status of both. What is, um, how, what's the standing of that? Uh, previous articles, especially about the time that San Bernardino announced its bankruptcy, is that LA may or may not be in financial difficulties, although they face a deficit of about $200 million. So what is the status versus the general fund versus the reserve fund? And the additional funding that's available to the city council in general. You have pipeline uh, funds, you have bus bench funds, you have AB 1290 funds, you have uh, several different other funds that are available to the city council. Mr. President, he's not talking about this. Get, he'll get back on. I trust Arnold. Arnold I, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to bring in effect that in addition to the general and the, and, the, and the reserve funds, all this money that floats around in these other different accounts, for lack of better terminology, is available. And keep in mind, you should really keep in mind, there was a meeting at the County Board of Supervisors last year. And the sheriff was talking about realignment, about getting funded by the state. And he said he's looking forward to it because the state pays more money. And I got up and I said, that's public money. So is this. This is all public funds. Thank you, Arnold. You may want to stay a little closer because I'm going to try to run through a couple of these items. So, members, let's prepare to vote on this item. Let us, uh, Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, I want to, before I go to Mr. Labange, I want to call up Mr. Michael Carrion on item six. Michael Carrion, item six. We'll move Mr. Clerk to item six.
Okay, Mr. Carrion. Um, yes, we want to transfer $25,000 to the recycling center. I, I'm asking myself, why do we have to keep transferring money? Every time I come here, you're transferring money to the recycling center. Isn't it making it money by itself? Where's all the money going that's made by the recycling center? Not only that, you got people going through my trash, taking out all the recycling recyclables that can be made, money. Who do you call to enforce that? I guess the same people you call to enforce the Brown Act. No one. I think this money shouldn't be transferred to the recycling center. It's just a plause to transfer money from one hand to the other. You're getting from, giving from Adam to Steve and you don't know where it's going or why they need it. It's just we spend foolishly and then we just ask for more money. They have a budget, but they don't stick to it. Why? The city's got big pockets. Let's just ask for more and we'll get more. $25,000 might not be a lot, but it can go for a lot in my community to help the youth that are dying on a daily basis here because our councilman doesn't do anything about it. So now he wants to transfer $25,000 to the recycling center again. I think before you transfer this money, ask how much money has been transferred in the past 12 months to this same recycling center. If it's not running efficiently, transfer it over to the public like you want to do everything else. Let a public entity run it. Maybe they can run it better than the city employees that are running the can. Because all they do is ask you guys for more money and you guys continue to give it and give it and give it. It's just like showing up here on time. Thank you, thank you. Okay, on this side, Michael, don't go far. On this side of Madam Clerk, if we could open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay, quickly, Michael, come back on item one. Arno, if you'd start, Mr. Sachs, I'm sorry. If you'd start making your way back, we're on item one now. Michael, carry on. Okay. <clears throat> you want to... Um... This is about gang reduction. Why is it that every time we have gang reduction or intervention, it's only in certain areas? This one happens to be in Mar Vista. Last Saturday, we had a gentleman that was assassinated in my community, a young kid, 20 years old. I asked my councilman, which is not here, he's back there taking pictures, why uh, he hasn't asked for a reward. And he states that uh, he's just following the police. So he's telling me basically he's not involved in what's needed here. He's just a puppet for the police department. When the police department say that they can't do it, uh, then he'll come and ask for it. Yet when this happened in Mr. Park's district, he was here the next day asking for rewards. So I guess we have a, a double standard. It's um, unfair that my council members playing with politics with the lives of children in the Al Sereno district. People are dying. Another one died Saturday. Yet we haven't got one job for these kids that you want to do the prevention for. Not one job from Councilman Weezer's office for the kids in El Sereno that are at risk. Yet, when you put them in a penal system and you run them through the city, city police and the county and everything else, you guys end up spending millions and millions of dollars daily. But, once again, all this gang intervention, all this gang prevention, just allows you to sleep better at night because you don't do any of it. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Arnold Sachs, item one. Well, yes, thank you again, Arnold Sachs. Item number one, gang intervention programs. Again, you have the program, you have several different avenues for funding, but you have no accountability for the public to understand where the money goes. Prior to this budget uh, approval that you had, 
He had $43 million in AB 1290 funding, which was an increase over the last two years from $11 million. Where'd the money go? You have Sunshine Canyon Landfill and Manatee Program. I know that this district may not be eligible for that funding, but what about bus bench revenue funding? What about pipeline revenue funding? The amount, again, of programs that you have initiated that you divide up funding that is under your control and is left out of the public's opinion or activities is mind-boggling. When does it stop? When does the public get to get an interest? This gang intervention program is so successful, and part of it might be having jobs for the summer, or jobs at all. Why are you sitting on these funds and not making them available for these projects? If it's an opportunity to increase the viability of the, the local neighborhoods where the programs would be initiated and the fundings would be ejected, what's the excuse? What's the reasoning? We heard seven or eight months for Councilman Biscayano to bring out an motion for skateboarding. Why so long? What is the, the, blo the blockage Thank for you. this move? Thank you, Mr. Saxon. If you'd stay close, because we're going to do your next item. Okay, no speakers in the queue. Madam Clerk, let's prepare to uh, vote on this item. Let's uh, open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Okay, now we'll move to item two. Mr. Sachs, you have one minute, one minute left. Yes, uh, thank remaining, you very much. I'm told. And, then, and also, uh, Bobby Cooper. Item number two. Yes, sir. Um, you're looking to get assistance programs for, for victims of the hurricanes and for residents displaced by foreclosures. So that's a very laudable idea. And I'm wondering, because I sat in council chambers when you uh, put a motion through and you voted on it, to start fining the banks $1,000 a day for unkempt houses that are in foreclosure. <clears throat> So I'm wondering how much money is in that fund right now? And what's that money being programmed? What's the use for that money that's being? Mr. President, he's not talking about the Hurricane Katrina. He'll get back. I, uh, Arnold, get back on Katrina, last please. last line of this item says residents displaced by foreclosures. I'm talking about the residents displaced by foreclosures. You have a fine available, $1,000 a day. Is it being collected? No. Is it being filed? No. So what is the sense of the City Council's actions when nothing has happened? Thank you, Mr. Sachs. Mr. Cooper? We're looking at item two, community from chair, housing, community, and economic development. I look at, I look at this situation. The last thing on there is foreclosures. We understand why the foreclosures are going down. But um, we don't, the, the disaster period, when you say Katrina and fires and the, there's going to be you're soliciting for funds for that, you're, you're allocating funds for those areas, the disaster is right here in Skid Row, Los Angeles, downtown with my people. I just deposited on the third $250,000 to try to put a Band-Aid on the problem. Let, let's but stay on this subject. The subject is not your quarter of a million dollars. My uh, our deposits have been in vain. You know, just like you're cutting the mic off, you cut my funds off. You know? No, you, that's, that's not the item, Mr. Cooper. That's not Mr. Cooper. That's not the item, sir, and you know that. You're voting on community help, and I'm trying to help, and you're stopping me. I'm victimized because I'm trying to help. That's what I'm talking about. I don't he, need to talk. He, he's not talking about this. Yeah, I, he, he's nowhere near the subject. Okay, sergeants, help, help him understand. Help him understand that he's got to stay on the item. Okay, with that said, Madam Clerk, let's prepare to vote. Let us open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Mr. Labange. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Larry, come on up here right now. I want to have a... Uh... 
very special recognition. Larry Minocchio, give him a big hand and his team that's here and his family. They've been waiting. Larry is retiring from the city of Los Angeles, have a quarter of a century of service, where he began in 1986 in the tax and permit field rep for the city clerk's office. And the field reps do a great job going out and making sure people have subscribed to their taxes. He's uh, promoted several times throughout his career, including to the principal tax compliant officer, and he served this position until his retirement. Uh, prior to joining the city, Larry worked for uh, 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 Alpha Beta. Uh, was a member of the Retail Clerks Local 770, as you know, which is so important from 75 to 89. And in his tenure, Larry received the Outstanding Service Award from uh, Ms. Cristobal, who is our General Manager of the Office of Finance. I just wanted to salute Larry here today. He's also a member of the Civilian Community Emergency Response Team that the Fire Department does, which is so important. We had two earthquakes this week. Are you ready, Larry? <laughs> All right, I know. Good. Okay. Well, he's got the training. He graduated from LMU. Give the Lions a big hand. All right. Lock, 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 lock. Oh, good. And he's a Lancer from Bishop Amat, so he's got all bases covered. Uh, let's have a big hand for Larry Minucchio. And to uh, Ms. Cristobal, would you say a few words about your great employee? Uh, yes, I definitely would like to say a few words about Larry Minocchio. Larry uh, has truly been a key member of my management team. He's been responsible for generating millions of dollars of revenue to the city to pay for city services. I have truly enjoyed working, for him, working with him. He certainly is someone that could be relied upon, and we're really going to miss him. So on behalf of the Office of Finance, Larry, I want to thank you for your 20, nearly 26 years of service. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. LeBond. Thank you. Mr. LeBond, yes. don't you have a son? that's going to begin attending high school in at, a few weeks. At, at Loyola, but there's only and, and so you give, you already got him in trouble because did, you're praising Bishop Amont. I did. I remember one time Bishop Amont was playing Loyola in the Coliseum, and the Cardinal was on one side in the first half. And you went to Bishop Amont, right? Where'd you go? Shamanad. Shamanad, close. Okay. And then, then the next half he was there. He wouldn't tell me who they were for. But we're all for Larry today. We're all for Larry today. One more thing, I just want to say, Larry is here with his wife, who actually works for the city of Los Angeles, as well as his brother, Terry Minocchio. He retired. Chief of the Tax Division retired, and now at LAPD, his wife. But Larry, say a few words on your last day. Come on, Larry. <laughs> thank you, Councilman Labonge. Uh, and thank you, uh, Council President Wesson and the, and the full council for acknowledging me today. I really appreciate that. 26 years ago, I was hired by the city clerk as a tax and permit field representative. And during this time, what a memorable period in these 26 years. I've worked for four mayoral administrations, the late Tom Bradley, Richard Reardon, James Hahn, and our current mayor, Antonio Villaragosa. As part of charter reform in 2000, the uh, Tax and Permit Division became uh, a department and became the Office of Finance. And that was a real game changer. And really, our, our core function became revenue generation. And that's where, what I had a lot to do with, uh, working with uh, new various programs to make sure that we brought in the money for the city into the general fund to fund the various services. Uh, during my career, I've been fortunate to take advantage of the equal advancement opportunities for myself and all the employees, as well as fair compensation, medical benefits, and the reality of a prosperous retirement. Uh, as I end my career with the city, I'm proud of, of my work. I, am, uh, very, uh, I had a very good uh, relationship with the council district, districts and working with them. It was a real learning experience. It was a pleasure to work with you. And I also want to thank my colleagues with the Office of Finance for their support. And last but not least, the business community of the City of Los Angeles. It's been a pleasure serving you. Thank you. Again, congratulations. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Larry, thank you. Let's go to the back room for a good shot. All right. Everybody, everybody.
Thank you, Mr. Clerk. We uh, are visited by the Coretz, the Coretz family. I see Gail, Rachel, and I don't know, who are these guys? Mr. Coretz, who are those? Are, these, uh, are they suitors? Do I have to go have a de that demand discussion with them? Uh, I think uh, one of them will have your job in about 30 years if he comes to Los Angeles. But, uh, 30, 30 years, I don't uh, give a darn. I care about the day. Aaron is my older nephew and Jared is my younger nephew. All uh, right. Aaron and Jared Erdman from New York. All right. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Uh, Mr. Clerk, is there any more business before this council? Mr. President, council has motions for posting and referral. They are posted and referred. The desk Next. is clear. Okay, announcements? Okay, no not Mr. Koretz. I have one announcement which uh, I, I'd ask my colleagues to follow up on also. Uh, as we all know, it's been very hot outside, and in Encino, which I'm proud to represent, we've been uh, over 100 degrees for a number of days now. And with, with our ongoing heat wave, I want to ask my colleagues, especially my Valley colleagues, to remind all city residents to be mindful about their power usage. Please conserve, conserve, conserve. And it doesn't require anyone to stop using electricity. You just need to be smart about how you use it. Keep our homes and offices a little warmer and try to schedule laundry and dishwashing and other such activities uh, during off-peak hours. We can keep everybody's lights on and air conditioning on, on, including our own, by being power wise. Our own DWP has great energy saving ideas on its website, ladwp.com, and I urge each council member to distribute this information to your constituents through your e-newsletter and other publications. Uh, most notably, the uh, ISO at the California state level has declared a flex alert today through Sunday, and so uh, if each of you were able to send out uh, a newsletter today um, to your email list with that information, I think that would be very helpful. So uh, thank you, Mr. President and colleagues, and uh, let's get the word out quickly so uh, we don't have any brownouts uh, over the weekend. No, thank you, Mr. Koretz. That's a, a, a very good message to pass along to our Angelinos. Um, Let's rise for adjourning motions. If everyone in the council chambers would please rise. Any adjourning motions on my, to my left? Any adjourning motion? Mr. Park. Yeah, thank you very much. I have two adjourning motions, and I'd ask that we adjourn in, member, in memory of Samuel Ray Kirksey, uh, uh, senior, who was born February 1943 in Boley, Oklahoma. Uh, he dedicated his life at an early age of leadership under Pastor J.W. Johnson at St. John Baptist Church in Oklahoma City. He began his education in Los Angeles at Main Street Elementary and graduated from Manual Arts High School. He enlisted in the Army uh, and served in Vietnam. Uh, he's had a passion for the culinary arts and loved to create uh, different dishes. Uh, he worked at uh, Everett Youth Homes and the Los Angeles Unified School District until his illness. He was a sportsman with his uh, uh, favorite team being the LA Lakers. Um, he also had a heart for music and his favorite genre was uh, jazz music. Uh, he survived by his mother, Lavita Washington, and six children. Services are today at 11 a.m. at the House of Winston Marchbury Chapel at 9501 South Vermont. And then also would ask that we adjourn in memory of Kenneth Frank Wright, uh, who was born in uh, Los Angeles in January 1955. He attended 118th Street Elementary School, Gompers Junior High, Centennial High, Compton Community College, and Grambling State University. He was an outstanding athlete who was drafted in June 1974 to a minor league California Angels baseball organization where he played for four years. He also served honorably for the Compton Fire Department uh, as a fire inspector for 32 years before retiring in 2011. Uh, he uh, uh, basically was a, he's a member of the First Community Baptist Church. Later, he and his family joined New Philadelphia AME under the uh, leadership of Reverend Sherman Gordon. Uh, he's survived by his wife, Jocelyn, 
and uh, a host of other relatives uh, and would be seated in death by his mother and father. Uh, and on the evening of August the 3rd, uh, he passed away. Any more adjourning motions? Members of this meeting is adjourned.